<laughs> Hi, this is Lara with Rethink Junk by Lara. Welcome to Thursdays at 3-ish. We um, posted that we were doing something. We didn't post what we were doing because we didn't have a plan until this morning. We are moving our warehouses, which I would not recommend to anyone. A five-year lease seemed like a long lease, but I'm like, we could sign a 25-year lease because I'm never going anywhere again. I didn't realize how much stuff we had to move till we started picking it all up and moving it. So we got a new space, which I'm absolutely in love with. We'll be fixing it up. You'll notice some, probably some changes every week. But this is our first Thursday at 3 in our new spot. What? I was saying she's getting some hides or what? You can talk. You can speak. We have a howdy from Diane White and a hey from Utah from Amy Roberry. Hey, Amy. Amy's always on time. And hi, Diane. Thank you guys for joining us. We, how many people? We got. Some, I want to welcome some people, but if nobody's on yet, then I'll wait a second to do that. Are people watching? Yep, 13. 13? All right, well, let's just do it because I'm going to assume everybody's going to drop everything they're doing and watch it tonight or something. So we're going to welcome our new retailers, and we're a little bit behind on this for 2018, so I'm going back, and what I'm doing today is I'm welcoming the new retailers we have from January. So we are so excited about the growth and so excited about everybody that's new. So we're going to welcome Lisa Johnson. She's with Colby's Hokey Pokey. Makes me really want to see her store. That's awesome. In Whitehall, Michigan. Makes me want to dance. Well, it makes me want to shop, um, but a lot of things make me want to shop. So we're welcoming Jackie Brown. She's with Marketplace at Lake Lanier in Georgia. Sheila Barnes with Julia's Florist in, I can't read my writing, Stark, Florida. Curtis Folsom, Curtis's Workshop. How tacky, who uses their own name in their business? <laughs> that would be me. Um, so welcome Curtis. He's in Statesville, Georgia. Tammy Meggers with TNT Furniture. Sound like it's going to explode. In Mason, um, Iowa. Julie Parker, Posh Couture on the Avenue in Mechanicsville, Virginia. Bammy Parsons, Serendipity by the Sea. That makes me want to just go to the beach. Sounds so relaxing. Serendipity by the Sea. In uh, Madeira Beach, Florida. Oh, we could go there. Uh, and Catherine Hermes. I hope I said that right. Um, the Ant and the Grasshopper. That's a cute name. Uh, Chester, New Jersey. So that we are so excited to have you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sorry it's a little bit late, but we want you to know how much we appreciate you. So this week, what we're going to do is... We have a lot of highs and hellos from everywhere. Yay! Hi and hello back to everywhere. Okay. So... Do you want to say help or not? Well, there's like a thousand. I have to scroll a lot. A thousand? That would be great if there was a thousand. Yes, if you're watching, you share this. You there's Ohio. Well, some people don't say where. Idaho. Jonesboro, um, Winston That's Salem, San Antonio. San Antonio. Thank okay, you. so Katie, you're gonna have to squish around here because I don't have to move this. This is one of the things we're doing. This is what it looked like before. Oh. Look, tacky gold. It's so funny because when I bought it at the thrift store, the guy was like, "Ooh, you got a good-looking piece there." And I said, "Yeah." <laughs> he said, "But you probably already knew that. That's why you picked it." And I couldn't say, "Yeah, I can't wait to paint it." Um, because I didn't want to disappoint him. But we're using one of our new colors, Deep Ocean. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And painting the gold. And already prepped. So for, but the, for those of you who are new, you would spray it with the prep, wipe it down. And it'll probably take another coat. But while that's drying with the fan that's so not plugged in. Or is it plugged in? Okay. Woo, let's turn it on. All right, while that's drying. And you have a half a hi from Jasper and like Georgia and East Texas. Hey, and Jasper. Minerva, Ohio. Minerva. That's the name. That's the name of somebody. Is that the Harry Potter McDonald's name? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so I'm using oyster to paint the pots. Painting flower pots is so much fun. Such an easy thing to do and such a great, they're really, really pretty. And uh, we're coming up on Mother's Day. Great way to make a Mother's Day present. Um, so I painted a coat of oyster on this one. I'm going to paint a coat of oyster on this one. So that this dries so that I can do a second coat. This is oyster. This is what my paint looks like when I paint with it and it stays out and I don't put the lid on it. It's all gummy and gross and look, it works perfectly. Where did you get your squirty bottle from? My squirty bottle? Oh, those are from WebsterRockStore.com. They are fantastic. They're called FIFO bottles, first in, first out, and I love them for the paint. As you can see, I love them for the paint because <laughs> I don't have to put the quart lid on or screw a pint lid on when it gets gummy or whatever. I can just smoosh it in and out of the, squirt it in and out of the bottle and it's awesome. Okay. Did we buy the labels for our bottles? You know what? I have had a couple of people ask for those and Beverly, if you're watching, I'm sorry because I should have hooked up with you quite some time ago to get your labels done. I just need to get them printed. So if you want a set of labels, how much for a set of 24 labels? I don't know. 
we'll, we'll put it on. Okay. We'll post it after. That's a great idea. We'll post it because um, yes, you can. We'll make that happen because we want the label to be on it that says Rethunk Junk. We don't want just a plain old. So yes, we will do that. Um, and we'll post after this. We'll post on there um, what how much it'll cost you for set. So it won't be. We long. also have a hide from Greensboro and Kentucky. Hey Greensboro, hey Kentucky. Is that Johnny? Mm-hmm. Hey Johnny. Do you have to prep the pots? No, you do not have to prep the pots. They're brand new terracotta pots. And I've painted plastic ones too. The terracotta is amazing because it just kind of soaks into them, which is wonderful. So I'm putting a second coat on this one just because you can still see through a little bit of the pots, but I'm not really worried about doing a fabulous job because... What was the name of the squirt bottles again? Webstaurantstore.com is the place. They're called FIFO bottles, first in, first out. And they have a 16 ounce that'll hold a pint, they have a 32 ounce that'll hold a quart, um, and they're phenomenal. They're great, 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 great. Um, because everything's drying, and I wanna show you what we're doing with everything, this, you saw, right? Because there should've been hearts and everybody loved it and it smells so fabulous. Mm -hmm. You know what I saw that I'm dying to do that I cannot find? Show that little candelabra thing again, Katie. I saw somewhere that somebody had done this with a chandelier. You know the brass chandeliers that have those same kind of lines? They had done it with a chandelier. They'd taken the wiring out or whatever and hung it on their screen porch with the little plants in it. It was so cute. It was so cute. <laughs> um, the other thing we're doing are these. These started like this. <laughs> and now they're not like that. So I'm going to put a um, first coat on this. Yes. Is oyster that color whiter than linen? Oyster is a more taupe color than linen. If I had to, I hate to say this because I want people to buy linen and it's beautiful. You don't look at linen and go, oh, that's yellow. But if you were going to look at the base of the paint, it has a little bit more yellow in it than oyster does. Oyster has a little bit more of a taupey kind of look to it. It's a great neutral. It's one of the reasons I used it because it is a fantastic color and I don't think enough people know about it. It's a really, really good color. Great questions. Anybody got any more questions? Anybody do anything fabulously fun for spring break? Obviously not, or you would not be sitting there watching this video, right? Do you sell small jars of chalk paint? We, okay, I'm gonna have to be really tacky first and say we're not a chalk paint, which I'm not being snarky or mean or whatever, but I just, for anybody else that's new, there's no powder in the formula, we don't wax, we glaze. There's a ton of awesome things about us that because we're not a chalk paint, and we do sell four ounce sample size, and I have one of those. We sell that size. That's a four ounce sample. So we sell those and pints and quarts. Another great question. They look different than that though. They do look different than that. That's an older one. Came from, from under my bench. Um, Kindness Rock said, look at your cute nails. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Kindness Rocks is very kind. Just <laughs> like the name says. Um, She's always got something pleasant to say. Betsy Taylor says, I'm here. Hey Betsy. All right, I'm gonna set this in front of the fan so it can dry while we glaze. This is just one of those little tray thingies, the terracotta trays. I've already got two coats on this because I had to glue them to the top of the candlesticks for those to sit on. Does that make sense? So, well, I'll show you when I do the other one. Okay, um, we're going to... Oh, that's a long one. I've got to read it. What is How it? How does oyster compare to fog? Do you recommend one of those color more than the other to use with dark glaze? No, I like both of them. I'll show you how they compare if we've got decent lighting. Oh, okay. Okay, then. Okay, so. Oyster. Look at this. All of this. Because I care so deeply. Oh, the brushes. When you have to space, my brushes are on the other side. I'm going to have to get used to that. Fog is more gray. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But you can see more taupe with the oyster, more gray with the fog. Can you hand me a pencil right there? Because in a minute when they dry, we'll come back and show them to you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we don't want to make people sick, so focus on the candlesticks behind me. Okay. I just don't want you to have to walk around with people, but I don't want to forget what we did here. Well, that shows up great, doesn't it? Okay, so we got fog and oyster. That we'll come back to them when they dry, and you can see the difference. But surely that helped a little. Somebody asked me to explain the difference between this and chalk paint. 
Okay, the difference between this and chalk paint is we don't have any powder in our formula, so it's not chalky. <laughs> um, it doesn't feel gritty. We seal with a polyurethane. We don't wax. Wax is a petroleum-based product. Once you've painted, I mean, once you've waxed it, you can't repaint it till you get the wax off. Wax is hard to apply, and I'm too lazy. Um, you have to rewax every three to six months, depending on how often you clean your piece, because you clean the wax off every time, a little bit every time you clean it. Um, dries fast, sticks to everything, sands beautifully. Those are the same as chalk paint. So we have a lot of the good stuff, and then we just have some better stuff because it's just it's just a lot easier to use. Put those in front of the fan too. Will the paint work on surfaces outside, such as an entry door? Yes, lots of people have painted their doors. If you, um, whoever asked that question, uh, if you have not already, and anybody, not just the person I'm talking to, who asked the question? Uh, Ellie name? Campbell. Ellie? Ellie, if you have not yet, and anybody, but Ellie and mm -hmm. everyone who has not yet joined the Rethunk Junk by Alara paint QA page, Find that on Facebook, join that, and if you ask about a front door, people are so lovely on that page, everybody is so wonderful and cooperative, you'll have like 15 pictures of a front door before you can even, well, you might have to wait a second because they have a lot of find their pictures, but anything you want, everybody will help jump in and answer, so you can get a lot of answers there. Mom repaints our door like every season. Actually, yes I colors. do, <laughs> yes I do. It's been like four different colors since we moved in. Okay, first I'm gonna do the last one for this little schmear over here. And what I did with that one is I went metallic all over. So this is our pearl metallic. Wanna zoom in, Kate? Pearl metallic. Hey Sherry. Hey Sherry. All right. And I'm just gonna put it all over. And this is the way I have found it covers best. Not not the sloppy way. I'm gonna go back and fix it in a sec. But we're putting pearl everywhere. But then, I'm gonna go back this direction. Should um, she put a top coat on the door? Yes, seal it with um, our satin tough top. You won't have any problems at all. And they're beautiful painted. There's there are some gorgeous pictures of doors out there. I know people will share. Is pearl metallic sheer? Um, just one second. No, none of the metallics are sheer, but it has. Um, it kind of would look like it is because I'm putting it over the oyster paint right now. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit sheer here. This depends on how heavy you put it on. So you can still see the paper through there. Now you need to do the camera so that they can see a beautiful metallic shine through there, Katie. Sell it, baby, sell it. Metallic. Sell it, sell it. It's hard, we're still working on I know, <laughs> I knew, I just put that on brown paper and people would be like, I'm not buying that stuff. It's actually really, really pretty on the pots. So in a minute you can close up on the pots. All right, there's all over. We're gonna put silver on the top in a minute. But this one is now ready. And what we did with this one for the candlesticks behind me, which I really like this combo. And the funny thing is I don't really like gold on things, but I'm putting gold on it. So I'm just gonna do gold on the top. And it is kind of sheer, cause see the gold over the, depends on how much you smooth it out. I'm okay with rustic, so I'm not worried about really making it smooth. And I'm just gonna do the top of this one. And um, those of you who are watching should be sharing. The more people you share it with, the more watching people do, which is a great thing. It makes me happy, and don't all of you, like your goal in life is to make me happy, right? So everybody should be sharing. All right. Like we need to figure out how to share with walmart.com or something where we're sharing with the big boys. All right, I did the little edge because I have such a spirit of excellence. Not. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do with this one is the dark glaze. But I really don't want much dark glaze on it all. I want to dry brush just a little bit. So I'm getting most of it, wow. That's why. What color for a first timer, what are they painting? What color would I suggest for a first timer? What are you painting? What am I thinking? I'm dry brushing in a rag. All right, now, ooh yeah, now I can feather it on. And that's just the regular dark glaze. <laughs> okay, so 
What color should I use? What are you painting? I'm redoing furniture. That cracks me up because there's so many pieces of furniture. If you're painting your kitchen cabinets, I'm not going to say peacock feather. If you're painting your teenage daughter's dresser, I might say peacock feather. If you can specify, she's and I'm not. She's the first time or what's easy. Is, is she saying what's easy to use? I'm happy to give color suggestions, um, and I wasn't making fun of you, it just cracked me up, it was a fun answer. Um, like, I can tell you, gray mist covers really, really well. If you're using it for the first time, gray mist, why you on your head? I do. Oh, gray, gray mist covers really well. Um, linen and cotton are some of our best sellers, but if you want to tell me furniture pieces, I'm happy to give you even more specifics. Dining table. Oh, dining table. Stain top the top and do the bottom linen or fog or some light color that's a beautiful combination or do the base black or midnight and stain top the top either one of those would be a very classy combination and those of you who are watching chime in and tell me what you think painting kitchen painting kitchen Sorry. painting kitchen cabinets with timeless teal we'd use the satin tough top over that and do I what I would use a satin tough top, and you want that on kitchen cabinets. They look classy and they're easy to clean, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this little guy, I have a trash bag because I'm so prepared. It goes right in there. Am I a gardener or what? <laughs> Okay, still going on the candlestick. Let me put a second cut on the candlestick. <gasps> I've got to glaze this too. The edges are going to show. I'm going away from the camera. I know, I'm sorry. There, I'm in my back. The pot's going to be on top of this, so I'm not real stressed. Because the whole name of the game is make it easy and be can make it fun. Don't stress. All right, so while that dries, we're gonna put a second coat on this guy, because I'm gonna show you how layered it is. We'll do, look at me multitasking. Mm -hmm. A man so could not do this. I'm putting another kind of the blue over the gold over here, the deep ocean, where we're gonna sit well, our flower pot. I didn't wanna make people sick. And it's there, you saw me put one coat on, so there you go. All right, second coat on this guy before he dries, then we'll finish the flower pot, and then we'll finish this. Woo, we're rock and rolling. Any more questions? Happy to answer them. Oh, about? Yay! Somebody found us in where now? Which is... Ooh. I would not, Jill, Jill has a bigger, much bigger brain than I do. Um, which is crazy because her head is nice and small. She fits it in there somehow. Um, but thank you for finding us in Tennessee and trying out the product. That makes us so happy. All right. No, you don't need to seal the clay pots, no. All right, second coat drying. Well, we put the last metallic on this guy. He's got pearl all over him. And you can, I should have shown you before I glaze that other one, you can totally tell once you have the pearl on. You can the, It may look like a light metallic or a see-through metallic or a, well, I would waste my time doing that metallic, but it makes a huge difference when you see one done and one not done. And we're doing the silver just the way we did the gold. Uh-huh, oh, I'll take compliments all day long. Yay! Somebody says I have energy. They don't see me after the camera goes off. Like a slug. Um, thank you so much. What's she altering? <laughs> what are you altering? Is it Sonia? What are you altering, Sonia? Tell me. Um, is there a certain time you should wait to glaze? I always get in trouble with this because I painted these... 10 minutes ago, well, you saw me put the second coat on, well, both coats on the one. Oh, whoa, whoa, I'm thinking metallics then. Okay, so somebody tried to glaze something after an hour and the paint's coming off? 
Okay, not dry enough. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. If your paint is coming off when you glaze, it's either because you haven't waited long enough for it to dry, which I understand because I'm all about getting it done and I'm all impatient. So wait longer for it to dry, or the other problem could be, and if this is what you did, then wait even longer. We've said when you're painting, first coat needs to be thin. Like what I did on the paper here would be a bad first coat. It's still not drying, it's on paper. Good first coat would be like this, nice and thin. You want that first coat to dry completely. The problem is, if you put a thick coat on, because you're gonna get her done or whatever, you put that thick coat on, it feels dry. It'll feel dry to me right over here, but it's not dry all the way through. So I put my second coat on and I seal what's underneath there. I seal that wet paint in. Do you have a question? No. Okay. Um, so <laughs> make sure that first coat is thin, then you're gonna get dry all the way through a whole lot faster. So if it's coming off, you may have wet paint under there. Make sure you prepped. If you prepped and you did a thin coat for your first coat and your second coat's had a while to dry, I'd maybe wait more than an hour. Sometimes you can get by with it. The other thing that you could have a problem with when you're glazing, if it's not the paint being wet, is don't let your rag be too wet. Don't use a dry rag. Just really, really wring it out, and then you don't need any pressure at all. The gentlest of touches, touching for glazing is all you need. Just a light, light touch. A lot of people think in order to blend it, they got to scrub or rub or push. You don't have to do that. Hopefully that helps on the glazing. Mm -hmm. Any what other questions? You said you should tell them wet is dressing. Well, tell them. Go ahead. I was just saying if you get it too wet and you rub on it and the paint's coming off, what you're doing is wet distressing beneath the glaze. So that's all it is. It's just a matter of pressure and the amount of moisture. Right, we'll put this one um, in and then we'll finish She's altering dancing. prom dresses in a wedding gown. Oh, wow. I don't have the ability to do that. My mom sews. She sewed. Okay, Sonia, if you're a seamstress, this will make you giggle. My mom said she made my wedding dress, which is absolutely gorgeous. I'll bring a picture of that next week because I know y'all want to see it. And I was like a size two. I had one chin, uh-huh, really, and cheekbones back when I got married. Wedding dress was beautiful. She spent forever beating it. She sewed our prom dresses. Tom and I went to prom together and he had a matching coral cummerbund that matched my coral dress and a coral bow tie. It was fabulous. Mm -hmm. We were really, really rocking it out. And, see, the glaze is already dry. I just did that silver and I'm picking up the pot. It's totally dry. Um, one thing I would not tell people to sew is swimsuits. Mom sewed our swimsuits every year and the elastic was just a little stretchy. So we'd dive into the pool and come out and be like, woo! And swimsuit be at the bottom of the pool. Made some, got some boyfriends that way, but it wouldn't, do it. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't suggest it. All right, now we got that all finished. Did you reach your Pinterest follower goal? No, we have not yet, slackers. Come on, like the Pinterest page. I don't know what to focus on. You're away from the... I'm bringing this over. Do you know the name of the Pinterest page? You can tell. No, I should. <laughs> um, when you look for Rethunk Junk, it'll be it'll say like the official page or something like that. You'll know because it'll be official. So this is not really dry, but for the sake of showing you what we're doing, we're going to play with it anyway. So what I did on those back there, and it's a subtle thing, but it made a difference to me, so that's what I'm showing you. First, on some areas... I did a little gold. This is all going to smear together because it's not dry. It's not going to highlight like I wanted to, but I'm going to show you anyway. All right, see how that's just... That is still wet. It is totally still wet. But, like I say, we're going to play anyway, just so I can show you the process. When you do it, it'll be dry and it'll all be fabulous. All right, let's go up here. Where... So I'm adding some gold. After I add some gold... I'm going to put some dark glaze on. Ooh, I got a hello. Ooh, hello to Katie. That makes her so happy when you guys say hello to her. All right, so let's pretend that's all we're gonna do right now with the gold. And then what I do is come back in after that's dry, which it's not, and add some dark glaze. So, Ooh, see, that's pretty. I like the glaze and the dark gold together. They're cool. And you can kind of tell that even though it's wet here. You can sort of see that. So I'm just putting the dark glaze everywhere. This just kind of gives it some depth. I'll have Katie zoom in on one of the finished ones here in a sec. All right. And then what I did was 
and this is our professional. I looked at it and I said, I really like that. So, because it looks, well, right now it looks a little muddy to everyone because I didn't wait for it to dry. So that was your professional opinion, I don't like that? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's yep. great. Yep. So, I'm going to dry brush some of the oyster back on the top. And now, I'm loving it. Because I can see down in there the other colors, but they're not all in your face. You can do um, any colors you want on this. Yes. In your opinion, what color would you use with timeless teal? If I did lower cabinets in teal, what would you do top? Nervous to do all teal because I'm afraid it would look too dark. Just wondering because I love the combos you picked. Timeless teal and sandstone. Timeless teal and oyster. Timeless teal and something. I wouldn't go with a real white white. I'd go with something like the oyster or the sandstone. Um, check out putty. It might be a little too dark too if you don't want to darken the kitchen up. But sandstone... Or oyster could be good choices. Now, this is what I was saying. I don't want to sit a flower pot there because it's going to fall off. So, E6000. <laughs> Love it. I tried Gorilla Glue. Have any of the rest of you tried Gorilla Glue? It should say somewhere on the package it will expand beyond your wildest dreams and mess up your project. It did just be a little bottom note there. Now, wait. Like 15 women have husbands that work at Gorilla Glue Company or work there themselves and I've just offended everyone I'm sure. Oh, All right. Deanne called me adorable. Katie loves compliments. I'm just going <laughs> to tell you right now. <laughs> All right. This goes on. For it, like, it's not centered for this side. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... How's that? That's better. Oh, wait. Slickerty. Is that, how's that? Good enough? Yeah, that looks pretty centered. Quick, tell me. I can move that it. way a little bit but not much. There how's you that? go. Yeah. All right, now we're going to sit her with her friends. Ooh, isn't that pretty? And our little gold pot. Get to that a little. Get that back a little. Okay, look how fabulous. Isn't that awesome? There's so many things you can do with flower pots. The other thing we didn't do because we played with it a couple weeks ago is, the other thing that's fabulous on a flower pot is gunking it. Using the Rethunk Gunk and napkins, you can make some adorable flower pots. So think about your mother, do some fabulous flowers, and make the pots absolutely adorable, and then it's a phenomenal gift. Let's do this one more time before we go. It's still a little wet, but you can see fog is gray, and this is oyster, and it's toper. Fog could be. You know what? Wait just one sec, Kate. Um, I have a question while you're doing that. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Can you stain top an old table that has been used as a painting table and has spray paint on it? Wasn't sure if it would cover. I don't think that's going to be a good candidate. I'm going to go with no on that. The point I'm going to go with no. Sorry, go ahead, Tom. <laughs> the, the point of stain top is when you put it on, you can see through it. So um, you would, it would look great, but you'd be able to see all that spray paint on top of it. So you might not want that. There it is. I didn't know Tom was here. was one of my jumbos. Apparently, I love it. But I was going to show you. So we had a question about it real quick before we go. So there's all my stars on lots of the same size of brushes again. <laughs> there it is with fog. See how pretty it is with oyster? I like it with oyster. A lot. And let me do one more thing for you real quick since we're playing. Real fast. Do you do something to the inside of the flower pot? No. Put a plant in. Um, could you apply tough top over a piece that has acrylic stenciling? Yes. You can seal anything. Um, would it be better to paint then put stain top on top? I guess that's the table. table. Yeah. You can um, paint in the... Okay, okay, go ahead. No. Cause, no, I'm going to do this while you do that. If you, um, if you paint it first, if you put the stain top on top of it, it's really going to look more like glaze. If I were if I were doing the top of a table and I was worried about it and worried about dimension like this guy, you know, I would probably paint it and then do a real light glaze on top of it. And I think that if the glaze will, if it has a little bit of dimension to it, the glaze kind of hides that. It, you know, it's with the spray paint thing, if it's got dimension. By dimension, I mean texture. Um, it will uh, hide some of that and make it look really pretty, make it look older. Um, and would you dark glaze both oyster and the teal? I personally would not because I'm really lazy and it would be a long job on kitchen cabinets, but it would be stunning. How's that for an answer? Now, I'm liking, you do what you want. Chances are, I've told people before, you will not have me over for dinner, so I will not be offended. There's the timeless teal. I'm not sure I like fog with it. 
Oyster's okay. I like the sandstone because I think the sandstone is as rich as the timeless teal is without being dark. I think oysters, I mean, which is a good, oysters are a good choice too, but I just think this one kind of holds its own with the teal really well. So this is the sandstone. That's the oyster. What are you going to pick? Tell us, tell us right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Send us pictures of your flowers, your flower pots, your fun projects. Let me know how the kitchen cabinets turn out. Um, don't sew swimsuits. Thank you for joining us, and we will keep adding to our new space and have some fun projects coming up. Welcome to our new retailers from January, and we'll highlight our February ones next week. And happy rethinking. Thank you.